looks very beautiful behind me, but uh, on the other side of the road where I'm going, there is a massive storm that I'm about to ride into. And I think this is gonna be like this for the next three, four days, all the way till I get to Rwanda. I'm in Tanzania right now. And uh, so I've buttoned down, I've got everything watertight, ready to go, but it's just gonna be slow going. I'm averaging about 35 miles an hour at the most right now. These roads are really perilous, um, but this is the adventure that I've been looking for. I think this is the most difficult road I've ever ridden in my life. Uh, about, I don't know, 20 or 30 kilometers north. It's just dirt, mud, gravel, sand. And uh, so now we've got rain to go with it. It's gonna be an amazing ride. At the beginning of the day, I thought this was going to be a beautiful ride. There was no rain, the road was dry, and things just looked amazing. But then, just like that, the first drops started to fall and it started to get really, really wet. Later in the day, the sun came out, things started to clear up, and I thought I was gonna avoid the rain altogether. But my luck just didn't hold out. In fact, not only did it rain harder, but the wind started to blow across the road and I had to crawl through this storm for hours and hours and hours. I've made it to the dirt section of this journey. I have a few hundred miles of this kind of road and maybe this actually is not so bad, it's graded. But yesterday it was raining so hard, a lot of this uh, is gonna be washed out and rutted and a lot of mud if it rained as much uh, in the north as it did in the south and all the weather reports say it did. So I'm really excited to see what today has to offer. Uh, I got up early, I was on the road by about 7.30. Um, I really wanna to try to make some time, so it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be really fun. Here we go. This ride was actually one of my absolute favorite rides in all of Africa. The turns were blast. I loved zipping through the villages and waving at the people. The roads were nice and dry and the dirt was just perfect. I was able to really pick up a lot of speed and it was, well, it was a blast. Things were going absolutely great. As I rode, I gradually started to see things change. Little ruts started to show up in the road. I started to see more construction. I saw where plows had come and tilled the soil. And so things were getting a little bit more dangerous. In fact, as I started to ride into the mountains, I could see where the water had created ruts along the road, and I could see the evidence of the rain, the rain that I didn't know I was about to run into. As I was riding, I started to get a little bit hungry, and I was approaching this village, and I thought I'd pull over to get a snack, and that's when I experienced one of my absolute favorite things. I was challenged to a dance-off with one of the villagers. They don't like cameras here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We had a good time here. Uh, What's your name? Mark? My name is Yara. Crazy. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm in a little bit of trouble because there are storm clouds rolling in and this road is about to just be washed out with mud and there's nothing for over 100 miles. So I'm going to have to ride. Uh, is still passable if it's not I have to find some place to camp but as you can see there's just there's nothing there's nowhere to camp even so um, I've got to figure this out really fast because I think in about 10 minutes it's gonna be down for
Nobody's hurt. Yeah, no problem. Is it? Just the bus. Okay. So where are you going? Sahali. Okay. Rwanda. We're going to Rwanda. Yeah. Alright, well, no problem. Yeah, I gotta beat the rain. No, of course. The station is here. Yeah. We've been there on the way. The station has been very bad. Are the roads better or worse? Of course, it is a good. Alright. You got it. Go go go. Take a picture. I didn't realize what kind of trouble I was in until this moment. I suddenly realized that there was water everywhere, not just on the road, but off the road. It was running down the road. The mud was getting thicker and heavier. It was starting to attach to my tires and my wheels. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to go any farther. But then again, I didn't know if I could turn around and go back. This road is just mud. It's very, very thick mud. I'm going about five miles an hour trying not to let my bike fall over. Uh, it's, I, won't, I won't make it if I keep on this road. I gotta get, I gotta get past this without falling over. bike is over in the mud. I've crashed over and over and over and the road I'm on right now it's got about two or three inches of just thick mud that's clay. Sorry, it's uh, mud that's clay and uh, the bike just, the wheels get packed full of clay and it turns into just ice. So I have to turn around. This is not something I can do by myself. If I had somebody with me, every time the bike fell over, I could have them help me pick it up and we could just edge along, but I'm alone. So, I can't pick the bike up anymore. I've picked it up about five times already. And I've had to unload everything just to be able to do that. So I'm gonna turn around and go back. I have gotten the bike off the ground again. I've loaded it back up with all my stuff. I was an idiot. I thought I'd just ride up the road with nothing on the bike and then I'll carry the stuff. Not realizing I'd ridden like a mile, maybe a mile and a half. And it was too much stuff for me to carry, so I had to basically walk a mile and a half, come back, walk back. So I've done, I don't know, miles. So now I have almost no strength. So at the top of this hill is where this mud stops. I think that the weight on the bike was actually helping me 
get some rear tire traction so I'm just gonna crawl and that's what I was doing before so I'm just gonna crawl along and see if I can make it to the top of this hill and then keep going back to get a, to a village get some water find a place to shelter I got a tent and stuff Muddy. This way. It's too muddy. I'm gonna go back. Okay, you want to go, to go back? Huh? Yeah, it's too okay. bad. Don't worry, just go back. Because maybe if 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 that we shall even tomorrow. It will, it will. Yeah. It's also, it's also <laughs> I'm out. I thought I'd made it out of the mud and everything was going to be great. But as I continued to ride south, I realized that the storm that was behind me had flooded the roads that just hours before I had been flying down at high speeds. Now these same roads were covered in the same mud that I'd just been struggling to ride through. I realized that I now had days and hundreds of miles to ride on wet, muddy roads. After hours of riding through the mud and the rain, I finally hit a patch of asphalt. And that meant that the village of Impanda was just down the road. That meant shelter and food, meant I didn't have to put up my tent. I could get some rest and some more energy to face the long ride the next day. And what a wonderful detour it was. When I got to Impanda, some locals invited me to go out and join them drink beers and watch the home team win the National Football Championship. I'm in Kativa National Park. I've got about 50 kilometers of dirt it looks like it's gonna rain. If I can make it through this before it rains, I should be in the clear. Um, a car just went through here and he said that there was no mud. So if I can get through this before that rain hits, I'm in good shape. If I get stuck in the rain, this is the same kind of uh, clay that I got stuck in before. It's gonna be really bad, so I gotta get going. Unfortunately, I didn't miss the rain. And it wasn't just 50 kilometers of dirt, it was hundreds of kilometers of dirt. In fact, I had to ride through the mud and the rain all day and all the way to Sumbawanga, Tanzania, where I was so exhausted when I finally arrived, I didn't have the energy to record any more video. So I'll leave you with this, my ride through muddy Tanzania.